Welcome to Guiding Bolt. Today I've got three ancient games that first started being played during the medieval and renaissance ages. Any or all three games would add a unique element to a D&D session by having your players actually play these games while their characters are visiting a tavern. Let's dive into our first game, Basset. The gambling game of 15th century Italy, Basset is a simple game. You'll need one person to be the dealer, also known as the Talir. The dealer needs one full deck of shuffled playing cards and a pot of betting chips. Any number of people can play. The players, known as punters, each need a personal pot of betting chips. Additionally, you'll need one deck of cards for every four punters. The deck should be sorted into their suits. One suit of 13 cards, known as a book, are given to each punter. The suit does not matter in gameplay, only a card's value and rank. Once ready, each punter decides which of their cards they would like to play and places them face up on the table. A bet is made by placing a wager on top of the upturned cards. Any and all cards in a player's book may be bet on in a turn, and the punter can wager any amount on any card. Once all bets have been made, the dealer turns over one card face up from the bottom of their full deck. The dealer wins all bets placed on cards that match this flip card's rank. Then the dealer deals two cards off the top of the deck. Each punter loses all bets that match the rank of the second card turned. The wager goes to the dealer and that card is taken out of play for the next round. If the punter's card matches the rank of the first card turn, the dealer loses and pays out a match of what the punter waged. At this point, the player has a choice. They can keep the wager won and retire the card for the next round, or leave the card and wager the original amount only in play. To signify that a winning card and bet is left in play, one corner of the card is turned up or marked with a small object like a bean or die. This is called a parole. If a card is paroled and it loses in a later round, the dealer gets the original bet on the card only and the card is then taken out of play for the next round. But if a card is paroled and wins again, it is paid off at seven times the original bet. This card can then be taken out of play or left in play again with the original bet on it. If left in play again, a second corner is marked. A punter can parole a winning card up to four times since a playing card has four corners. Each time a winning card is left in play, the amount the punter may collect on their initial bet multiplies. Winning with one corner marked is paid at seven times the initial wage. Two corners is 15 times, three corners is 30 times, and having all four corners pays out 60 times the initial wager. Getting to the 60 times payout would require the punter to parole into a new deck since it requires the card's rank being drawn five times by the dealer. If the parole card loses at any of these stages, the punter only loses the amount of the initial wager. The dealer continues to turn two cards each round, with the first card winning and the second card losing for the punters. Each punter is able to adjust which cards they bet on and the amount wagered between each round of two drawn cards. If a card a punter has bet on neither wins nor loses in a round, it may be left in play, withdrawn, or the bet can be raised. The dealer's final solo card is a losing card, and if a punter's remaining bet matches the rank on the final card, the wager goes to the dealer's bank, thus ending the game. Punters can make side bets on if other punters' cards will lose in the next round. Passe Dies Passe Dies, also known as Spot, Dicey, Roll 10, and Birdie, among other names, is a simple game that's played with three dice. There's always a banker, and the number of players is unlimited. The first gamer rolls. Every time he throws under 10, he and all the other players in the game lose the specified stake, which goes to the banker. Every time he rolls above 10, or passes 10, once the name of the game, the banker must return double the stake to all the players in the game. 
the banker changes after each roll. After three losses of the roller, no matter how many wins, the roller position is passed to another gamer in the circle. Example, if there are four people in the game, remember one is the banker and one is rolling for everyone else, and the stake is $5, then a loss will result in the banker taking $5 from each player, but a win will involve the banker giving $10 to each player. The banker is at a disadvantage, and hustlers try and avoid taking up the position. Some gamblers prefer to make the odds fairer for the banker by making a total of exactly 10 a winning number for the bank. Ranter Go Round Ranter Go Round, also called Cuckoo, Knave, Kill a Court, Chase the Ace, and Hex and Cart. This game first started popping up around the early 15th century. This is another simple game that can be played by any number of players in one deck of playing cards. The cards rank king high to ace low without regard to suit. Each player is dealt one card face down. Starting from the dealer's left, each player may either swap cards with the player to the left or stand. A player may only refuse to swap cards if he has a king, which he must then show. This exchange continues until it returns to the dealer who may, if he wishes, draw a card at random from the pack to replace his dealt card. The player who holds the lowest ranked card must then contribute to the pot. In the event two or more players tie for the lowest ranked cards, they must both contribute to the pot. Dealer then passes to the left. After a player has lost a certain number of hands and contributed to the pot, he is out of the game. The last player takes the whole pot. The number of hands required to be lost can be varied, but the modern game derived from the medieval version is normally three or four. In the version of the game I play, we have an additional rule related to the two. If the lowest ranked card at the end of the round is a two, the player must pay double to the pot. And that wraps up the rules for our third and final game. Have you ever incorporated gameplay like this into a D&D session before? If so, tell me how it went down below in the comments. What game did your players play? How did it go? If you plan to incorporate one into a future session thanks to today's video, share with us which one you plan to throw at your players. As always, I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you back here next time.